Okay, we should uh, start. So here, class is started 11.07. So uh, here, uh, just uh, this illustrates a graphics for changing a permutation into a tree. It's just for warming up. So that was a permutation, and this is a tree. And as you can see, uh, you get the permutation for the levels of the nodes. So this is a layer tree. The inverse permutation by from the top by the length of the columns going to the, the nodes. And here's our crossword puzzle back. Very good. So uh, this one. This is what we won't use. And uh, let me uh, recall from last time. That we have uh, taken a uh, just a minute. Oh. The illustration disappeared. So uh, that was plates are fine. And uh, Okay, so what I'd like to do today is uh, I uh, recall from last time that we uh, we have expressed uh, plates in terms of trees. So now we should uh, extend this and recall what we did. We we uh, uh, so the plates were permutohedral counts, and what we did was we uh, uh, we separated the uh, numbers here, one, two, three, the names of coordinates into lumps. And then we put under every, uh, under each of these, which are called set compositions, we put a, uh, 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 all the possible layered trees. And uh, what I'd like to uh, do today is to uh, observe a few uh, uh, I mean to to notice the uh, um, the properties of this map. Yes. So, uh, namely, uh, one is anti-symmetry. So we have the map. It goes from plates. Uh, let me introduce actually another another thing first. Um, so you see when we have uh, intertwiners of uh, representations for instance this this here would be a represent this would be three representations of sl4 so these are single dots double dots triple dots single dots double dots triple dots you have some multiplicities for each of them some numbers and then you notice, uh, for instance, for SL4, that, uh, so this is V to the wedge, so SL4 here, SLN, N is equal to four, acts on V is equal to C to the N, and uh, we have V to the wedge one, V to the wedge two, and V to the wedge three, and uh, now v to the wedge k tends uh, v to the wedge l tends uh, v to the wedge m. Um, this contains v to the wedge k plus l plus m. So if k 
plus L plus M is equal to N, then this is the identity representation. And uh, uh, there's also a similar thing where you, uh, you take uh, V to the wedge N minus K, which is V to the wedge K bar. You have a similar identity. And let's see how this works here. You see what we have is a, a, a map like this, if we do it carefully. One, one, and one here. You see, so this intertwiner, this map from uh, uh, three, three to uh, three, three, two. So here in this case, so if K plus is N or two N, uh, the other kind is, uh, has this form here. Let me take the symmetric one. You see one plus one plus two. So these are intertwiners of representations and uh, uh, we're going to call these blades. I have introduced them a while ago. Physicists have used them. Uh, Robert Cocro and uh, Jean Bernard Zuber in France have written a few papers in which uh, they are called O blades. This has been a direct communication to Coco. So these are the blades, and uh, they will be fundamental in, uh, in these higher representations. Now, we should look at them. So the idea is that if you put, uh, if you combine these generators, uh, so uh, adding and subtracting so that every edge here is positive in this uh, diagram, then you get exactly all the possible intertwiners. You can count the possible intertwiners between representations of S, L, uh, N. So here, for instance, let's put both of them together and we'll have some multiplicities which are here, two, one, 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 and the rest are zeros. So these, these are blades. Uh, let's define formally a blade. I'm going to uh, uh, lift this for the moment and uh, so the idea here, if you look, uh, we have to look at what happens at a point. We can put uh, one more blade just uh, uh, here, for instance, and this would be V tensor V bar contains a trivial. And uh, if we look at a, a point, what we see are exactly the, uh, the um, uh, fine roots of, uh, of uh, type uh, here. So these directions, these are affine roots of type A3 uh, uh, here. Yes, so if you take uh, permitohedra, Maybe we need that permitohedron, uh, uh, the, the affine one. So if we take uh, 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 some affine permitohedra, we get these. Now, if you want to find the affine roots in general in a simplex, so this is delta N uh, in, uh, with N plus one, vertices and uh, the 
vec the vec vertices, the vectors EI projected. So these are EI uh, tilde, which are the projection of the unit vectors EI onto the sum of the x case equal to zero. So they are the projections on the uh, plane. Uh, so of coordinates with some zero. So the edges, the edges are the roots. And uh, uh, the observation is that if you, if you have an, uh, a fine, so uh, a system of simple roots are uh, given precisely by a Hamiltonian path. Thank you. And with an affine in front, Hamiltonian path and respectively Hamiltonian circuit on the edges of the simplex. Yes, so if you have a, a simplex like this, uh, if you take the two, uh, two circuits, if you put them afterwards in uh, have the same uh, origin, then these form a system of uh, fine roots. So this is here, the system is A2 or SL3 fine roots. And um, as you notice, these are precisely the picture that appear here as intertwiners. So uh, uh, that's why we're going to take uh, the uh, uh, we're going to take a system of uh, fine roots and we're going to uh, um, to uh, take the following, so one is the, uh, so we take the corresponding, so these are, these are the neighborhoods of a vertex in uh, the paving by a fine permutohedra. As you see, if you make here some nice uh, network of permutohedra, that's exactly uh, a vertex. So remember that for plates, we took uh, the neighborhood of in one solid permitohedron. Here we take the affine, just a surface. And uh, so we define now blades to be the uh, uh, N minus, so co-dimension one uh, surfaces spanned. So these will be no, the non-degenerate blades spanned by um, N minus one 
of the uh, fine roots. at a point so if you are in uh, uh, this is a picture thank you William so this is a picture in uh, in 3D uh, here's a, an affine point and you can see that uh, there are four affine roots and every pair of them uh, generates a surface. Yes, so we have four, point, four choose two. Um, four choose two pieces of the blade, four choose two surfaces here. You can see that, uh, that uh, uh, so let's do here, this is a Dunkin diagram. The fine Dunkin, and these are orthogonal, and so you take uh, pairs of two, either these or these. So you have here n, uh, n choose uh, n minus d. Uh, excuse me, d is a number of coordinates, d choose d minus k. Uh, faces of co-dimension k. And we'll denote this by uh, such a blade by uh, uh, something like uh, uh, S1, again low S1, S2, low S2, and SM, lower SM, exactly like four blades, and here we'll put the co-dimension, which is not the co-dimension k. These give you the position and these are lumped coordinates. So these have a vertex positioned uh, somewhere. If we uh, take the natural coordinates here, which will be 4, 0, 0, 0, 4, 0, 0, 0, 4, then uh, something like this would be uh, 1 to 1. Yes, for this vertex. And uh, these are the blades. And uh, uh, let me... So there's a, the, the maximum co-dimension one is simply a, a dot. So let me, let's look a little bit at uh, the case of two coordinates of uh, two dimensional things. So D is equal to three. And this uh, here, all through, we should change maybe N to D. Uh, D is equal to three, which has uh, which is in the plane, and in this case, around the point, you have uh, uh, this, the following blades. This is the first blade, a second blade. So these are non-degenerate. And you have three uh, degenerate ones. And uh, uh, let's say that the coordinates are uh, zero, zero, zero. So as the directions are there, one, two, three. So um, 
around the point. You can see also that they satisfy one relation here, namely uh, this plus this is equal to this plus this plus the other. So we actually take characteristic functions here. modulo lower dimensional things. Okay, so these would be uh, co-dimension one blades. And uh, so these are the ones which appear in uh, in uh, uh, all the intertwiner theory of uh, uh, of representations of SLN, and this is something uh, known as breathing. This change, and uh, what I'd like to do is to show. Uh, um, First of all, to to uh, to show the importance of the higher co-dimensions ones. So the higher co-dimension ones in the plane, uh, I don't know any particular role played by them in representation theory, but there is one. So there's a dot which has co-dimension two, and uh, uh, we can take uh, full blades. So this, these, are, these are blades when two of the coordinates, so here, for instance, the coordinates two and three are lumped. Yes, the bottom ones. And this is a one-dimensional picture, which is uh, lumped. Now, we can take full blades, and the full blades have all co-dimensions. bigger than or equal to one. So we have a full blade here, which is this plus a dot. Another one like this plus a dot. And these are already full because they come out of dots. So for instance, uh, this one is a dot on the one dimensional thing, which is which is uh, traced back. So this is a lumping. These are the coordinates two and three. And this is a coordinate two, three, x one, x two plus x three. Yes, so, uh, uh, so now, as you see, we have, uh, we have these uh, these uh, five uh, blades. At, so these are the blades which are non-degenerate at a point, and it will turn out that these are linearly independent. So, uh, in fact, this relation becomes, in that case, a definition. Can you see uh, what uh, this would give you uh, if you introduce the degenerate the point? This would give you a definition of the dot, do you see? So namely, if you want to define the dot by itself, this would be one half of this plus this, minus this, minus that, minus the horizontal, yes? So uh, uh, you can see this way that uh, what is a relation of blades in co-dimension one is a definition in higher co-dimensions.
Now, in order to study these relations, which we'll do this week, the relations in general of plates and blades, we, uh, we shall map them to trees. Um, and the map is now the following. So, um, look at what happened for a plate. We took uh, the, so this was a plate, and we had the coordinates here, and we took uh, um, trees. Um, the trees were, so let's take, for instance, this plate. The direction of the coordinates is one, two, three. So here we have, uh, uh, we, we have, we are on the side x, two, three, which was defined as x, two plus x, three. x, two, three was bigger than zero. As you can see, we're down here. And uh, uh, x intersected with x, uh, two is bigger than zero. Yes, so we get our flag of, uh, of uh, x2 bigger than 0, x2 plus x3 bigger than 0. And of course, x1 plus x2 plus x3 in this case was equal to 0. Yes, so our plate would be 2, 3, 1. Maybe with a coordinate 0, 0, 0. Now, with such a flag, you see when we have a, uh, so when we wrote them as trees, so this was a tree which was defining everything, so this was one, two, three lumped with one third, then we put uh, two, three, and one uh, with two, three in front, and then two and three, one, and then uh, uh, two, three, one, with all the possible trees, two, three, one, with all the possible trees. And we show that this map was reversible. Here the coefficient was one half. It's one over the product of the lumping. So this is one over two times one, one times two, and one over one, one, one. So it was a sum of this form, and it was uh, the map was in the anti-symmetrization of these. Now, if we have the same two, three, one as a blade, and if we don't specify anything, it will have co-dimension one. Now, this will be this thing here. And you see, uh, this is one and two, three, as you see for the coordinates, yes? And the difference is that here, you see, because we had a solid permutohedron, here we had chosen, we had a, a distinguished normal, right? Uh, outside from the I mean, toward the, the inside of the, of the body, of the permitohedron, yes? So what happens here is uh, between the two uh, sets, subsets one and two, three, can you see? Here they were not symmetric, two, three was preferred because it was inside the body, yes? There the two are symmetric, yes? So the nodes of these trees were anti-symmetric. Um, what we have to use here is a symmetric, uh, uh, symmetric trees. And uh, uh, maybe uh, somebody here knows uh, what's the name of, uh, of uh, symmetric trees. Uh, I mean, what do you do if you have symmetric nodes in trees? You make them into a oh, 
you need your silviculture knowledge here. So you have trees which you can permute at will. They form a bit of imagination. It's a, you have two trees and they're the same this way and this way. It's a forest. Yes, so, uh, so here we'll have for this blade, we'll have one and two, three. Do you see as one and two, three with the coefficient, the product of the coefficients, which is, uh, which is here one half. And uh, uh, then, as you can see here, we distinguish, we use, uh, the, here we have a plate, as you can see on the one-dimensional uh, subset, so we distinguish the coordinate two. Yes, we go toward the coordinate two. So we'll have here plus uh, one over one times one and two, three. And this, by the way, this is equal to 2, 3, and 1. So you could put underneath an, a symmetric node, symmetric root node. Yes, but uh, if you have a symmetric root node, that's, that, that becomes a forest. Yes, so in the forest, uh, all the trees can be permuted. And the others, yes, which are and similar ones for the other three blades. Yes, so the tree will be uh, this way. A, uh, so the the uh, I think I should change the a bit. Is it visible the blackboard? Yes. So uh, we can now. Uh, uh, and uh, can you guess now exactly what would happen? What would be the definition of the dot in this case? So do you see here we had co-dimension one that gave us two trees, right? The dot has nothing distinguished. Yes, so the dot, so this was this, and the dot would be then a forest of, hmm? Three trees, exactly, that's it, thank you. So this is one two and three, three trees, each, each of them with one, one variable. Yes, and, uh, and now we can define the full blades. The map is the following. You take the uh, so if you have again S one, S one, S two, S two. And here we'll put all. So this should be the following. We take, we uh, uh, lump them. Uh, just like for, uh, so first of all, we permute them circularly, circular permutation. And after that, we lump them. So, uh, 
and uh, okay, and uh, after so then we lump them, and after that we have to partition them into a forest. Yes, so partition, keeping order. That's called a set composition by combinatorialist. And then uh, put under each I'm going to go a bit faster because uh, some parts are common to the plates. Uh, put under each all uh, so partition into uh, let's put more than two parts. So let's put here the number of parts. minus one is equal to the co-dimension. Put under each all possible layer trees. A nice part is that we'll get out of these, as you'll see soon, the uh, the Riemann, uh, uh, the Riemannian curvature of all things, but a bit uh, later. So put under each all possible layer trees, and uh, then with coefficient, the uh, product one, one over the product. of uh, mm, the number of s in each lump so give each lump as coordinate the sum of the coordinates of the s's corresponding s and finally anti-symmetrize each three. And here we use the circular permutations which only the circular permutations which give distinct trees. We'll, I'm going to show you in a moment what that is. If you have any questions, uh, there's a microphone here, so please take it. So, uh, in case, let's take, uh, for instance, this one. This one was one here and two, three. This was, uh, uh, so this was uh, two, three, one. And they were at zero. And here we take all of them. 
and look at the blades here, one and two, three, the position of the coordinates was one, two, and three. Uh, this is uh, uh, two and one, three, and this is, uh, uh, which we're going to write as two and three, one, and this is going to be one and uh, uh, one, two on this side, and three on the other. So this should go into, uh, so here we, as we said, this was a two, three, one. And we separate it into two, three, we lump it into two, three, and one, two, and three, one. Well, one, two, three, the big lump, two, three, and one, uh, two, and three, one, and here, as you can see circularly, we have a one, two, if one goes in front, one, two, and three. And finally, we have the two, three, one, And the, uh, uh, two, three, one, and, uh, well, we'll put three, I mean, one in front, two, and three. And uh, uh, three and one in front. and then two, and so this is a single one, uh, and this one will not be used. We need at least two trees, and here this will have this and this underneath, again this and this. And uh, each of these will be also anti-symmetrized. So we'll get uh, quite a large number of trees. So this is the uh, so this is a map from uh, from a blade into trees. Now uh, I have forgotten here the uh, lumping. Uh, so there are two, there are a couple more. So there's two, three, and one. There's uh, two and three, one. And remember that the trees in the forest commute, one, two, and three. And uh, finally, the one, two, three, which has higher co-dimension. And, uh, So it turns out that there's a big matrix which has on the one side uh, per the permutation up to circular uh, up to circular permutations. So for instance, the permutations which start with one. And on the other side, all these possible trees. And that matrix is, is invertible. And we'll give a description to the extent to which we have uh, time in the course. Any questions up to up to here? So, for instance, here by anti-symmetrization, we'll get two, three, one. This one has coefficient one, and we'll get a minus two, one, three, and we'll get a plus. Uh, uh, minus uh, three, one, and two, and plus um, plus. Oh, sorry, 
there's a, I made a big mistake here. Uh, these have a single tree, yes? So these are all cut, yes? So we need, we need more than two trees for the affine ones. Yes, so the, the things that remain are, the, are these, exactly. And as you can see up, they're exactly what we found. Uh, now, those were plates, actually. And we don't take these. So these would be, yes. Yes, so uh, if we have uh, four indices, then uh, we'll have a, uh, I don't think I, I, I have it here in some mathematical file, which I'll, uh, I'll bring uh, uh, maybe, I mean, I don't think I have it at hand, uh, honeycombs. So it could be one of the pictures here. Yes, so uh, this is a blade, uh, this, this here, this is an older file, um, these should be viewed, the bottom node is symmetric, so these are forests of two trees, if you can imagine them, okay? So this is a tree one, two, four, and three. Yes, so this is the expansion of one, two, three, four, for the case of, oh, thank you, very good. So, uh, for the case of uh, uh, so this is the, exp the expansion of one, two, three, four. Once again, the bottom node is symmetric, so it should be removed, and this gives uh, uh, a nice uh, forest. Uh, forest of two trees, so these are blades of co-dimension one. Uh, we have to compress these uh, quite uh, quite a bit. I mean the uh, the lectures because there's probably enough material in about these blades and uh, plates to fill a one semester course easily. So we have to uh, um, now let me. Uh, okay, that, does this answer your? Uh, your, your question, yes. Um, so let's look at this and let's see uh, some properties which come out immediately out of the genesis. So once again, the definition that we're going to use are, are a linear combination of characteristic functions of such uh, blades. Yes, in uh, every co-dimension, neglecting the, the higher co-dimensions. So, um, so these are in co-dimension one, and these will be used as higher intertwiners. That's the idea. They do appear actually in the definition as we're going to see if there's some time. They do appear in the definition of uh, Klebsch Gordon and of uh, six J symbols, which are the deepest uh, things in uh, in uh, uh, the study of intertwiners of representations. And now let's uh, look at the following. We have uh, five minutes, but uh, we are prepared. So we're going to... <laughs> Look at the following properties. First of all, if we have uh, two subsets A, B, and C, which are lumps, so in the expansion, in the expansion of a plate, of a blade, Yes, so once again, what we do is we take all the affine root systems 
after we do some lumping, so all the affine root systems, and for each affine root system, we take all co-dimensions. And those are the blades. Now, in the expansion of, the, uh, of a plate, if we have A, B, C, then the trees, trees, so these are lumps which should be in an anti-symmetric tree. Then what appears underneath is this. A, B, and C, which means that by using the anti-symmetry, this one is a negative of A, of C, and uh, A, B. Yes, so if we take this tree and we look at the A, B, C, uh, C, a, B, and then uh, B, C, and A. Yes, this one appears with coefficient 1, or some coefficient with sine plus, the coefficient, the same coefficient with sine minus, and this one does not appear because even after anti-symmetrization. So B, C, and A does not appear, this tree. So the net result of this is that if we sum over all the circular permutations, of A, B, C, the coefficients of a tree which has here A, B, and C, the sum of, this, of these coefficients is always zero. That's because it holds on generators. So this is the uh, Jacobi identity or in the case of uh, the Riemann uh, uh, curvature, it will be the Bianchi identity. And uh, one more thing, if we have an A, B, there's always a, uh, so it, uh, so if we, ha if we have this, there's always a B and A, but, uh, so if this is a, uh, if this is a tree, yes, uh, in the forest, this one appears by anti-symmetrization, And then A, uh, let's say uh, B, and anything else, B does, does not appear elsewhere. So the net consequence of that is that uh, the net consequence of that is that if we take a uh, if we have the if we take a branch B, and if we have a lot of trees in our forest, so this is a rest, 
then if we put the B in turn the sum of the coefficients of these is equal to zero. And this property we'll call grafting. That's what you do when you put a little branch on an apple tree to make it give you different apples through hormones. So there we are, and uh, so this holds either left or right, yes? So if you have such a branch and you put them at the root of the trees in a forest, in all, the, uh, in all possible ways, the sum of the coefficients is, uh, is zero. Uh, just because uh, the only coefficients which appear in a generator are two coefficients, and they will have uh, sign uh, uh, one of them plus and the other one minus. I think that the, uh, uh, what I was mentioning before needs an adjustment. So this one, uh, it, so if you have a circular order, then you can check, we leave this as an exercise, that if you have a circular order, then you can check that, uh, that uh, uh, only two of these coefficients appear, and one is, so the correct definition is, uh, the correct observation is the following, B lies between three, two things, and B can be grafted either here or here, and this one, after you switch B to the right, it gives you a negative sign, that's a proof. Yes, so, uh, so this gives grafting, and this in turn will give exactly the Riemann curvature tense uh, property. So uh, the fundamental property of, uh, of the high intertwiners. We're going to stop here.